Welcome into K State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by our recruiting guru, Drew Galloway, as the Wildcats have added another commitment to their 2024 class. And look, everybody was freaking out for a while there. The Cats have hit double digits, baby. Uh, what, we've got a month and a half until signing day, and the Cats have finally hit double digits for the 2024 class. Probably not done. Probably would like to add some more, but the latest addition to get them to 10 is a wide receiver, Jaquez Spradley Dimps, a receiver out of the state of Texas. The Wildcats had him in for a visit for the TCU game, and obviously K-State had a couple of commits come in the immediate aftermath of that victory over TCU, and then against Houston, the Wildcats are able to, to finally seal the deal, I guess, with Jaquez Spradley Dimps. So, Drew, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, how this came about for K-State, because he was originally committed to North Texas, and uh, the Wildcats got him to flip. Uh, so it, it was kind of a long time coming, but also in a short period amount of time, if that makes sense, where uh, K State kind of identified him in September. And they were thinking about offering, maybe going for it. And then I think it was like end of September. Uh, Jaquez Bradley Dimps gets the offer from Matthew Middleton and those two hit it off right away. And it's kind of one where the lead up into the offer probably helped them a little bit where they got to talk to him and they knew more about him. And on his official visit, uh, his host, he had two different hosts uh, throughout the week or the two days that he was there. Uh, he had Sterling Lockett as one of his hosts, and then he had Cameron Salas, who is another Texas kid that they wanted to have uh, be his host as a Texan that has came to K-State and kind of showing him what it's about. And the the number one thing that I think really sealed the deal was uh, Coach Middleton. I mean, th this is his first uh, commit since uh, being hired at K-State. And he said that there were up to 10 commits now for K-State. And uh, I, I genuinely don't know how many more that they're going to have because this class is going to be smaller. I think 15 to 17 range is probably where the number falls. I wouldn't be surprised if another receiver is added as well. Um, but, I mean, that that's kind of how it all came together. It was, uh, it was a, a lot of time. Uh, with Coach Middleton, Josh Buford was involved a lot, and then uh, Chuck Lilly was also very involved in this recruitment as well. Well, I think a lot of people, they, they might initially think, okay, you, you flipped a guy from North Texas, big deal. But if you go and you look, I mean, it, it's not just the North Texas aspect of it. I mean, he had offers from other Power 5 schools, TCU, Baylor, Virginia, uh, in the mix there. And also, I mean, to Tulane's a team that he had an offer from, and obviously the the Green Wave have been doing great things, and they're no insignificant player. So there were substantial offers there. I guess, I guess I should say Boston College, but uh, I barely I would barely count Boston College as a as a Power Five school. Um, he actually uh, he committed to North Texas with the TCU and Baylor offer on the table. Yeah. So, I mean, that this is, this is significant for K-State and this is a guy that, I mean, obviously they're not just taking a dude from North Texas because they're like, yeah, we just want to load up on guys. They obviously see something him and they do think that uh, they can, they can get a good player out of this. So, I mean, what, where does he project on the field? How, how do you evaluate uh, the play of Jaquez Spradley Dimps? Uh, so something that really surprised me uh, on his official visit was, how put together he was. And I actually heard that uh, the day that he landed, the, the the number one thing I asked, like, who's there and, like, what's kind of going on with that? And he got there on the Friday before the TCU game. And the number one thing I heard was, wow, this guy is, like, really put together. So I was excited to, like, size him up, see wh what he looks like. And he, he looks like a dude that could potentially play right away. I mean, it, it's a guy that you never want to put a lot of like, oh, yeah, he could play right away out there because, I mean, we've seen with the 2023 class, I don't think anybody thought that Austin Romaine would be a starter year one or Jack Fabris would be at the four-game limit already. And then, like, somebody like Jordan Allen, who was a four-star, who 
is coming around and is making a lot of waves internally in practice, but he still hasn't played yet. And then like Chidi Obiizer, who was one of the, the later guys in the class and one of kind of the unheralded guys has played at defensive end where Jordan Allen has it yet. So it's, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on him saying that, but it's more of like, he just looks, he looks the part. He looks really good. He has huge hands. I mean, I, I did some investigative research because he has, it says that he has like, I want to say like 10 and a half inch hands in his uh, Twitter bio or something like that. Um, yeah, it says that he has 10 and a half inch hands. And I did some research about like NFL receivers who only have, and I think the average NFL receiver has like 9.3 inch hands is what I found. Mm -hmm. so he has big hands. Uh, they use them a lot in high school, especially in the jet sweep slash screen game, which is actually uh, one thing that I asked him about. Uh, like, what what did you like about like what you saw with K-State's offense uh, during the TCU game? And he said that he really liked how they ran a lot of jet sweeps because he's more of a yards after catch guy. I, I would compare him more as like a Rashi Rice uh, for the Chiefs and like Mar Marquez Valdez Scantling than somebody like DeAndre Hopkins, who's like a big physical freak. Where I think that a lot of his game is going to be get him the ball in space and let him go. Well, and, and, you know, size in general is significant. I know that you say, and maybe it's obviously not as big of a deal when you got a guy that's it's more about what he does once the ball's in his hands. But as we had seen for a majority of this season, Casey had a tough time getting the ball to some of these guys. And you, you talked about the hand size, just size in general. If if you threw Jack West, Bradley Demps on the Wildcat roster right now of the, the key contributing receivers, he would be tied for the tallest with Jaden Jackson and Jace Brown. All those guys are 6'1". Um, K-State has has had a, a stretch here where they've had some undersized guys at that position. And I think it's interesting, too, to, to hear about him being interested in the sweep game. And we've seen K-State over the last two games, and really maybe three, start to incorporate that more into the offense again as they start to realize, okay, we're finding the guys that can do it. And it was obviously a lethal weapon when Malik Knowles was at K-State. So if you can get a guy that profiles to be in that spot, that, that's a key thing for this offense very clearly because uh, since that's become a heavy part of the, the offense, which you date it back to 2022 and then the last three games of the current season, K-State's got a pretty darn good record when they have that at their disposal. And the offense uh, has been one of the better ones in the Big 12. So uh, I think that is uh, certainly not something to, to overlook. Yeah, and it's another one where I, I don't know if I would go out and call Jaquez Bradley Demps a burner speed wise, but he's plenty fast. I think he had uh, a tweet where he was at, I want to say it was actually North Texas's camp, where he ran like a 445. And I mean, that, that is plenty fast enough at this level. I know that there were people on uh, the board at KSO that were kind of talking about like what's his speed like. And there were people that were saying, oh, I don't think he's very fast. He's he's plenty fast enough. Mm -hmm. he, I think I, I want to say he's also a track guy. So he he is plenty fast enough to be at this level. Well, that's uh, that's that's good to know, because uh, if if you have all the, the things that at least can project, it, it gives you an opportunity. And obviously, K-State is in no position to, to turn away receivers that have even you know the slightest chance of, of being serious contributors, and it seems like uh, the chances are much greater than for Jaquez Bradley Demp. So, any final thoughts on the the newest commit to the Cats class of twenty twenty four? He's another guy that uh, I mean we've we've talked about uh, a few times with this class, where he's another one that he is thinking about enrolling early, and obviously enrolling early gets you a better opportunity to play. I mean we, we've seen that with Jace Brown uh, this season where getting on campus and getting used to the playbook has kind of helped him turn the corner. And then now he's a major contributor. Um, what's really interesting to me is uh, just that K-State has kind of picked and chosen their spots more in Texas, where it used to be K-State was pretty heavy in Texas. And that's kind of gone away a little bit, but I, I don't think it's like a huge deal but it is interesting to like think about it like in the grand scheme of things, because if you look at their track record of who they've gotten in Texas, 
it's almost all been contributors. I mean, uh, two spawn is the, the major one. Uh, but I mean, Kobe Savage is a Texas guy. It wasn't them, but I mean, Malik Knowles was a big or was from Texas. Like, K State is starting to move into Texas a little bit, le- is starting to go a little bit less into Texas, but when they have, they've hit. So I think that people that are like, oh, like, what's the deal with Texas recruiting? It's more of, I think they're being a lot more selective. Well, and obviously they they've they've proven this staff that they know what they're doing when it comes to their recruiting philosophy and their ways because things have worked out for them to this point. And we've talked about it a lot when it comes to the receivers aspect of this, but just being able to get some continuity and being able to have receivers see what it looks like with Colin Klein as your offensive coordinator as opposed to kind of the archaic Courtney Messingham offense you're going to get different guys. And I think just that in general should give people confidence almost blindly and and who they're able to get at receiver, because I think the receivers you're bringing in now, even if they don't have the flash and and they're, they're three stars only. And, you know, you would, everybody would love four and five star receivers. That's just a pipe dream at K state, but you are going to get guys now that have higher ceilings, those higher end three stars and guys that, you know, they may be a three-star recruiting-wise, but you can project them out to produce at a higher level. And I think a lot of that comes down to the offense for K-State now, too, being much more attractive to the to these receivers. Oh, yeah. And, like, it, it goes back to, like, what I said earlier, where at K-State, it's so hard to look at recruiting rankings and know who is going to contribute right away. Because I, I don't think that anybody foresaw some of the guys that are contributing right now as true freshmen no. contributing. So, I mean, if you have a projectable frame and attributes, and especially if you enroll early, I mean, that that's all we heard with Austin Romain, and now that's all we're hearing with Jace Brown is enrolling early was huge for them. That I feel like it's it's it gives you a much better opportunity to see the field early. So, I mean, it, it is very possible. I mean... I wouldn't be surprised if he plays a little bit of special teams too, because it's another guy where if his best attribute is yards after catch, kind of like Malik Knowles who had the big body. Yes, but he was a much better. If you got him out in space, it's more like that is like, why not put him at like kick return or punt return if he can do it. Yeah, no, the, the possibilities could be endless. This is a good pickup for the Wildcats to add to the class and and just keep stockpiling options that could maybe work out and be contributors for uh, the coming seasons when you have, obviously, a really special quarterback in Avery Johnson ready to go for you. So all good news for the Wildcats on the recruiting front as they keep adding before signing day comes in December. And uh, I'm sure we are not done talking about some 2024 commits, and there could be some big ones still left out there for the Wildcats. So stay up to date with all the latest recruiting news with K-State Online, whether it's right here on the YouTube page or be sure to head on over to On3, go to the K-State Online tab, get signed up if you're not, and be ready for all the great recruiting info and updates from Drew and DY, and we'll keep you posted every time there's a commit right here with the breakdown. Thanks to Drew. I'm Mason. We are out.